<laughs> okay. Um, th thank you so much, actually, for giving me the opportunity to present our project. Um, as I, you said, actually, I'm heading a group of rehabilitation and assistive robotics, and this is why actually we do more rehabilitation applications, and we have also other applications more related to, surg to surgery, and this is uh, um, in the concern of our presentation of today. Maybe just a few words about what we do. We do um, uh, lower limb exoskeleton. This is uh, these are our uh, three. Um, the lower limb exoskeletons that we have. The, this one is for spinal cord injury subjects, and these two others is uh, are lower limb exoskeletons for assistive uh, in assistive um, tasks, in which actually the contribution in torque is really um, modulated with respect to requirements. Uh, maybe a video to see the uh, twice exoskeleton in operation which is, as I said, it's a device which is controlled in pure position control. Another one which is um, probably more for people with the muscle weakness and we are addressing as well people with stroke is um, it's a device which uh, also activate abduction, abduction on, in the hip and which assist the movements in lower limbs. And the, one of the other topics that uh, are in concern in our group is uh, robotics for surgery. And this is one of the projects in which we developed uh, a robot for laparoscopic surgery. And the project of today concerns actually this um, four-handed manipulation. And by the way, this project actually started a uh, few years ago. Uh, with the PhD thesis of Elahi Abdi, which is now at um, Monarch University, and with uh, Etienne Bourdet, who is in Imperial College, and uh, our concern was evaluating the uh, the capability to uh, manipulate objects through the uh, in three-handed way. What we call a three-handed way was actually uh, using the foot control to have a supernumerary limb which is foot control. And by this way, actually, we move it to another operation to try to say, okay, why not more, um, more hands? And this is how we move it to um, this uh, dream to have a kind of octopus with a lot of hands. And why not, if, if we succeeded by in using three limbs, why not uh, four limbs? And if we demonstrated that in a demanding task, actually, the, 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 we, we, we could actually efficiently control three-handed manipulation um, by managing well burden. And the envisioned project was actually to see, to say, okay, why not um, doing that in surgery, in laparoscopic surgery, uh, could be done as well in other kind of surgery and could be done as well in industrial applications. And today I, I will try to, to take time to, um, to uh, show out actually our um, application in surgery. If you have a look actually in, in this kind of applications, could be in surgery, could be in industrial applications, um, in which you have um, different manipulations while by having a professional main operator and an assistant. You always have these two uh, kind of uh, operations in which one is guiding and the other one, the other one is supporting or, or is helping, is, um, is supporting. And the way it was in our case was actually what, what to envision in terms of uh, application in surgery and how to control, how to control at the end, this super, super numerary manipulation. As we did it, uh, and this was the envisioned uh, scenario in 2017, was to say, okay, uh, since we, we have been capable to food control um, a robotic arm, to say, okay, we will try to do it in bipedal and uh, to food control in bipedal way, um, an instrument. 
and as you can see uh, in the in music actually in the, the organic uh, uh, pianist is capable actually to have this four-handed manipulation to fully control his lower limbs and fully coordinate his lower limbs and his upper limbs and for sure actually there is a lot of an, uh, advantages as uh, the the capability to uh, remove the dexterity of the fit to the um, and to improve it by using this foot interface this haptic foot interface as well as to um, supervise and uh, having uh, this haptic feedback which improves the control of this supernumerary uh, limb as well as to leverage the advantages from robotics as having uh, improving the precision the payload and the share the sharing the control and i i what i mean by sharing the control is probably as my colleagues has 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 have already presented is to demonstrate that having uh, additional intelligence uh, additional control strategies may improve the uh, the target task at the end um, we have been actually uh, we started first by envisioning the um, the food control of the, an additional um, robotic arm which has at the end um, to manipulate um, an instrument in surgery as you can see here it's just three-handed manipulation because the the surgeon in laparoscopy has to manipulate this uh, has to manipulate this three, uh, his, the, the two instruments while food controlling another, another instrument. But this is still actually only three-handed uh, manipulation. If you can complete it by having to say, okay, what can we do? And what has been proposed to, to the foundation hustler, because this is uh, the, the foundation hustler has been convinced by uh, supporting this project, was to say, okay, we'd like to at least um, propose to the surgeon to manipulate um, two robotic arms by manipulating first an endoscope by having managing the focus of the endoscope and in the other hand to manipulate the instrument in doing that in that way and they have been i would say at least welcoming the idea and here you can see that one of the uh, one of the pedals is controlling the uh, the endoscope, means the, uh, the the focal point of view, and the other um, foot is controlling the uh, the uh, the second instrument, which give us at the end this uh, four-handed manipulation. Uh, rapidly, uh, our uh, Supernumerary robotic arm is not new because we already uh, uh, see and uh, know that there is a lot of projects in supernumerary manipulation. The the one from the uh, Professor Azada with these meta arms, uh, and we in our case we we also developed this three-handed, as I said, three-handed surgical application already in 2016. Uh, without having any uh, foot interface at the beginning. And then we developed a very simple interface to control um, the camera and endoscope. And it was still at this moment, three-handed manipulation. And as I said, we already um, found a nice result in which we, we demonstrated that even in demanding tasks, actually the uh, three-handed manipulation was efficient. In the same way as uh, probably other colleagues has demonstra have de demonstrated. And in 2018, the work of uh, from Keio University is also very interesting with the meta arms having this additional super limb to go forward with uh, multi-handed manipulation. And uh, new work also uh, because um, Etienne Burdet continued to work with the, the University of Singapore to develop other full joystick interface to operate a uh, robotic arm. In our case, actually, uh, we, 
we tried actually to have to develop more position more, more uh, control strategies because most of these projects are in position control the teleoperation is limited uh, in terms of contact information and we decided actually to have bipedal control and to have also as i said before uh, additional shared control strategies um, maybe no need to go forward with these two with with this uh, different uh, foot robotic platforms but just to say that in uh, if you have a look in the literature most of the robotic platforms for the foot are related to rehabilitation techniques and in our case we have been uh, motivated to develop another one uh, to have less footprint a lot of uh, increase the back drapability increase the degrees of freedom which are actuated and as well to uh, increase the, um, the workspace and have uh, have the haptic um, haptic feedback. Just a few words about the investigation that we did with different food interfaces. We investigated different technologies, different strategies, and at the end we 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 ended with the implementation of this one, which was, uh, which had um, a very nice and very com uh, compact um, uh, footprint, while being uh, bipedal and with five degrees of freedom actuated for the two translations and the three orientations. And I will uh, focus on showing it. Here is the, um, the pedal interface as you can see it has these two translations and the three orientations the pitch rule and you 0, 0.0 degrees of uh, resolution in in, in uh, orientation and three microns in um, in translations thanks to a differential mechanism that you can see here we we, we have had actually very compact translation uh, orientational uh, actuated roll and pitch and this was what has been implemented in our food controlled interface we first started with the um, pilot study to evaluate in different degrees of freedom uh, separated each at each time uh, we evaluated the precision the resolution and we evaluated the, uh, the speed and the reaction time. And we find out that the translational degrees of freedom are more accurate than the orientations with about nine millimeters in, in X. In the, this is the moving forward in about five millimeters in Y and about three degrees in the orientations while having um, at the health of the, uh, the, the workspace, something like 20 and 15 millimeters in X, Y and five degrees in dorsi frontal flexion. And in terms of reaction time was about 400 milliseconds to 500 milliseconds between X, Y and even the, the orientations. The, um, the first scenario that has been implemented in surgery was the one actually it was actually we I lost audio. I don't know. Yeah, I also can't hear you. Yeah. We cannot hear you, Mohammed. I I'm not sure if he can hear us either. Um, <laughs> wait, let me just send him a message. Um, he might not be able to see us either. Yeah, let me just send him a message. Uh,
Alu? Yes, we can hear you now. Yeah. Ah, okay. Did you lost me since a uh, lot of time ago? Uh, no, about, I think, two slides, I guess. Okay. I will start maybe by here. Yeah, I think around there. Okay. I start by here. And here I, I show you actually the um, the um, the demonstration of our surgical first scenario um, implemented in surgical application, in which the the right foot is controlling the um, the right foot is controlling the retractor and the left foot is controlling the endoscope. And as you can see here, the we addressed suturing, in which the surgeon is suturing with his two biological hands, manipulating the retractor with one of the um, food controlled robots and manipulating the, um, the camera, the endoscope with the, the other um, foot. So if you want to have a look more uh, on the uh, full video, you can just um, scan the QR code and you can have a look to it. Just to continue with the, this manipulation, we. We then actually tr uh, try to implement, and we are trying to implement more systematic evaluation by having the comparing, trying to compare, because this is probably something which is always um, um, uh, driving us how to evaluate the performances between having 300 manipulation, 200 manipulation, 400 manipulation. Do we address, uh, is, it, is it relevant to address that um, only uh, uh, the manipulation of the endoscope, or is it relevant to address as well uh, the uh, manipulation of two instruments that are not necessarily, uh, um, uh, that may be coordinated or not necessarily coordinated. And this is why we are trying to go forward with some systematic uh, uh, experiments. In that one, actually, in which, in which we, we had uh, um, manipulation of uh, this elastic to go through uh, a definite schema, definite figure with the signal foot tool manipulation uh, addressed in one second and 16, one minute and 16 seconds. And we did it in the same way using dual fit uh, tool manipulation. As you can see, uh, probably that the task is more complicated uh, in in two uh, fit controlled operation because it requires more uh, concentration. The user, the operator has to concentrate more, has to have more skills. For now, it's, it's the first time he, the, the operator the, um, is, is trying the experiment. And as you can see, the efficiency of the task in terms of time of execution was better than in single foot manipulation. The task has been uh, succeeded in less than one minute while being done in something like, if I remember well, one minute and 16 seconds in dual, dual foot control. Yes, in single foot control, it was one minute, 12 seconds in, in, in single foot was something like 55 seconds. Just to continue by having more complex tasks, more complex figures, and this is what we are doing now by having this systematic experiments. Um, maybe to address, uh, to show you maybe other examples that we are as well trying to address because designing of experiments, evaluating the, the efficiency in, in manipulation in surgery is uh, one of the main concepts now in our group. And I can show you this um, other experiment that we are addressing in four-handed manipulation in virtual environment, just to evaluate the alignment, evaluate the manipulation in uh, different degrees of freedom and evaluating as well the effect of haptic feedback in the, in the success of the uh, manipulation. Here you can see some aspects related to alignments with respect to objectives by reaching 
defined points and by manipulating as well the underscope means the focal point of view and manipulating the, the underscope um, and manipulating the instrument. Okay, just to continue. Okay, other uh, evaluation tasks to evaluate the alignment of the instrument of defined it. Just this is um, uh, experiments to evaluate the orientations, the capability to control orientations and the capability to control other orientations by aligning the instrument with respect to defining vectors. Um, I will just show you other examples and then I finish my presentation by addressing um, manipulation in industrial applications. And here it was to control these two robotic arms to manipulate real objects and to try to disturb the, this manipulation, this grasp, dual grasp, using a hammer. And you can see that the, the, the food control is managing well, and the humans are capable actually to manage well and to adapt to maintain the grasp while disturbing the system. Now, uh, another application just to implement shared control, which started from the work of uh, my colleague uh, Bila, uh, Professor Bila, in doing developing shared control strategies and shared control strategies from learning, using the autonomy and the idea how to combine the, the autonomy to give some autonomy to robots and how to combine this autonomy and this shared control while having the, the, the manipulation um, succeeded. And we did that in that way that in four-handed manipulation in trying to address actually this multi-screwing by having this object, I can show you the, the, the scenario. And here you can see the degrees of freedom that are implemented in as a baseline, this is just in pure position position mapping while having this screwing in multi degrees of freedom. And the thing is that how to improve that? And first, we, we can improve that in developing an assisting uh, strategy by force. Otherwise, we can as well implement another strategy by having. Um, a coordination which is implemented uh, in a native mode and having one of the uh, one of the feet controlling the object while the other one is controlling the force uh, maybe just to conclude now um, to conclude that there is a really a lot of uh, potential in using food control in surgical applications that Telemanipulation in manufacturing uh, and industrial applications is also worth to be addressed. And shared control strategies and force assistance are relevant in improving, improving the efficiency um, in supernumerary uh, manipulations. And now we are um, running some systematic trials to, um, to assess all this information and the performances. And thank you so much for your attention.